Hi, I'd like to talk to you today about a specific end game that arises from the Sicilian defence. I think when you're playing a specific opening, it's very important not just to, to know it as an opening as such, but also to, to understand the middle game themes, where the pieces go, and, and also what sort of end game you're going to get from it. Um, the end game which I'm going to show you today is an end game which, being a Sicilian defence player, um, I've had this end game in countless games, you know, both of tournament games and of blitz and, and everything under the sun, but it's so common to get a situation like this where you're going to get the same end game because you play the same opening. And it's not just the Sicilian defence. You're going to get the same end game in any opening you play in that if you play the King's Indian constantly, you're very often going to get an end game with a locked up centre or... Um, if you play the Queen's Gambit, you're often going to get an endgame with a minority attack, for example. The endgame I'm going to show you today is a very common endgame that you can get from a number of different variations of the Sicilian. And we're just going to discuss the, the pawn pushes in it and how to actually use it to advantage it and to take the edge in it. Um, so let's switch to the board and we'll have a look. Um, this is, it comes from E4, C5, so the Sicilian defence. Um, knight f3 and then either d6 or e6 or knight c6 um, you know it doesn't really matter let's say e6 d4 takes here now what I want to I want to specify though that the end game that this comes from comes from these variations where you're going to get this situation knight knight can be here that's fine essentially where black is going to get something like this Okay, knight could be on this square, bishop could be here, it could be here. What you are not going to get this end game from, you're not going to get it from a pelican variation where you've got a pawn here, a Sveshnikov they call it these days, um, or a Nardorf where you have the pawn here. You, you may get a similar one from a Nardorf, but the one I want to really discuss today is when you've got a pawn here. So you're going to play your game and through the middle game, pieces are going to come off. And at some point, you're going to get an end game that looks with a pawn structure something like this. Okay, this is your basic pawn structure from this opening. Now, during during the middle game, one or and as the middle game sort of continues, one one strategy is to for white, and this is a very simplistic strategy, I should say. Um, I've actually, I'll actually put the pawn here because I think this is important. Um, one strategy is to pile up on the d-pawn. Of course, it's not the only way white should play the position. In fact, it's actually, it's actually a very simplistic approach to the position. White, white really should be just trying to push and gain space. Um, but at some point, you know, it, it's a, it's a possibility to attack the d-pawn. So, black, black will usually during the middle game. Try to push this d pawn. Now, the general theme in the Sicilian defence, if black can get d5 in, black's either equal or better. So, at some, that black will always be trying for it. Now, say black gets it in, and which they usually do if the game. You tend to find with Sicilians if um if black doesn't get belted very quickly, black will usually be on top by about the late middle game. Unless, of course, black has other weaknesses in their position. Now, once d5 has been achieved and either a swap has occurred this way or this way, you're going to get an end game something like this. Now, of course, you'll have minor pieces on the board, but I want to, I want to examine the pawns first. So, one of your strategies is a minority attack down this side. So, you know, you may be using rooks. Yeah, you may actually use a bishop to help your minority attack, you know, in conjunction with a rook. So something like this, um, you know, try to weaken a pawn, so weaken that one, or, um, for example, weaken that one. Something like this, but this is, this is not so much what I wanted to discuss here. I want to discuss the other side of the board, where you've got your majority. Now, generally you'll get into this sort of end game, and it's rather common to get into it with minor pieces. Um, so you'll often have a bishop here and a bishop here. 
Um, your main first move to expose white here, white will often have had to defend this. Um, at some stage, you may have this situation and white's forced to defend. So your first move is h6. And you follow it up with g5. So the situation works as follows. If they do nothing, you simply capture and you've weakened their they've weakened their pawn by isolating it. And then moves such as bishop here and walk the king in to just win the pawn. But that's a general idea. And of course you might have a knight on the board so a knight can round that pawn up very quickly. What will tend to happen though is they'll tend to swap. Now when they swap, you've created yourself a passed pawn and a protected passed pawn at that. So and of course, if this one's weak, it, so it helps you a lot too. Once you've created your past pawn, then you just start moving down the board with it. You gradually try to push it through. Um, in the meantime, white may, may try this sort of thing. They also have a past pawn, but it's also an isolated one. So you simply swap some pieces off and then go about your business of converting your past pawn. Um, so quite, quite a short lecture this time, but very, very effective strategy when you're playing these types of end games. I, I hope this has helped you next time you get into it.